Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to create a very cool effect. We'll be animating a cloth constrained by the animation of a shape with the creation of a stitch pattern. It's a fairly simple but very powerful effect. Today we will mainly focus on the creating of the stitch effect and activating the fabric with the pattern we've created. You can of course find this complete project like all the other projects on my Patreon or directly purchase it on Gumroad. Link in the description. Okay guys, let's start now. Okay, so now we are in 3 Max and the first thing I'm going to do is to import the shape for the creation of the stitches. So, I will go here, import merge, of course all files and select here night logo for me. You can of course import the shape you want, your logo, anything you want. Okay, so I select merge object and import shape as a single object. Perfect. I will now set this logo to the axis 0, 0 and 0 and increase a bit the scale. Okay, you can see here that the shape is not perfect, so I will go to interpolation here and select adaptative. Perfect. Okay, so now we have a perfect shape. What we want to do now is to create the stitch for the stitches animation. So I will go to front view, go here to shape and add a rectangle. So I can create here my rectangle, play with the corner radius, like this I think, great. Go to rendering and select enable in viewport to see the look of the shape, okay. And switch to rectangular. I can play a bit with the look of the shape, like this. I think it will be good like this. Go to interpolation and select again adaptative to add very good subdivision for the shape. So here adaptative. Perfect. I cannot go back to the front view. Add an edit poly. Select all the vertices here in the bottom and delete. Okay, so we have here the shape for the stitch. You can of course improve the shape or create the shape you want, but I think it will be very good for the example. I can now Play a bit with the pivot in the same axis of the bottom of the shape. Okay, so now what we have to do is just scale down a bit the look of the stitch. Okay, now what we want is to create a lot of clone for this object. So you can do the classic way, like this, clone instance and add the number of copies you want. But after all, it's very difficult to control the space between two elements. So we will use another method. What we will do is to use the clone modifier. If you don't have the clone modifier, you can find it in e2soft.com free plugins clone. Here you have the clone modifier. You just have to download the clone for free and after install in 3ds Max and it works perfectly. Okay, so I can go back to 3ds Max, go to my modifier and add a clone modifier. Here you can see the number of clones, so you can select the number of clones you want, maybe 50 to start. And you can see that nothing changed because all the clones are on the same object. So you can here control the displacement with all this parameter. So what I want to do is to change the displacement on the x-axis, so I will increase this value again. And here you can easily control the space between each element. It's very cool. You can of course, after our control the number of clones you want, it's very easy to play with a clone like this. Okay, so go back to 50, I think it's good. Decrease a bit the scale, maybe like this. And now what we want to do is to conform all these stitches with the shape of the Nike logo here. So I will select the shape here, Add a pass deform. So pass deform. You have this one, the WSM, but don't use this one. We'll use another. We will use the pass deform here. We can now pick the shape here. You can see that it's a bit strange. It's not perfect. So we'll change the pass deform axis to X. It's already better like this. Decrease a bit the stretch, I think. 0.2. Same here 
for the scale. So enable the drive and scale and decrease the scale 0.2. Okay, I will zoom in a bit and you can see here's a look. We can see that the orientation is not good. So I will go here in the rotation and maybe change the value to 180. Okay, I think it's perfect like this. You can of course go back to the clone modifier, increase the distance between each element, and of course increase the number of clones. Like this will be good because I will increase a bit the scale. So I can go back to the path deform for the scale, for the stretch 0.25. Same for the scale, maybe? No, the 0.2 is good. Okay, I cannot go back here to the clone, go to front view, and play a bit with the number of clones. I think it's good like this. We can see that the beginning is not perfect, so I can go back here to the path deform and play a bit with the percent. Okay, so now we have the stitches creation of the logo. Now what we want to do is to create the animation. So I will select here my rectangle with the clone and the pass deform and deactivate for the moment the pass deform. Go to front view and add a slice modifier. So here's the slice, select the x-axis and remove positive. We can see here sliced plane for the gizmo of the plane and we will animate the gizmo of the plane. So go to frame zero, auto key, set a key, go to frame 100 and we'll move here the gizmo to the end of the stitches. It's here. Okay, like this. So you can see here the creation of the stitch. Okay. We don't want a slow beginning and slow end. So I will select the two keyframe, go to graph editor, neutral view, here, the neutral view, go to modified object, slice, zoom out a bit, something like this, zoom out again, Okay, select the two keyframe and switch the mode to linear. Perfect. I can now reactivate here the pass deform, but after the slice, like this, I will go here and deactivate the shape. I just want the rectangle and you will see how it looks. So, like this, and let's see. very cool. It's a very cool and easy way with the clone modifier and the pass deform to create animation like this. Perfect. Okay, so now we have the stitch animation. Now what we want to do is to do the same thing, but for the act. So I will deactivate for the moment the rectangle, reactivate the shape, and I will add a box. So error box, like this, add lot of subdivision, 50, 50, 50. Change a bit, no, the 8 is good like this, and play with the length here because we want a small activation here. Okay, so I will now add the pass deform, the same. Pass deform um, here, and now pick the night logo, the shape here. Okay, you can see that it's good. I will now go back to the box and play with the 8 like this to create the wall shape. Great. I can now go back in 8 and increase the number of subdivision. It's perfect like this. Maybe decrease a bit the width like this. Okay. So now what we have to do is just create the animation as for the stitches. So I will go to the path deform, go to frame 0, stretch here to 0, Add the key, of course. Go to frame 100 and set the stretch here to 1. Okay, 
I can now select the two keyframes and do the same thing. Graph Editor, New Track View, Modified Object, Pass Deform, Decrease a bit. You can see here the two keyframes and select Linear. Perfect. We can see that we have the animation of the box and the creation of the logo. Perfect. I can now deactivate the shape. We have here the activation for the clothes and the stitches effect. And you can see that they have the same animation speed. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have the creation of the stitches effect and the creation of the box that follows the animation of the shape for the close activation. Okay, it's great, we'll now switch to the tie flow setup. Okay, so now we have here the full tie flow simulation. Let's see if I move forward. Creation of the clothes with the forced and after the creation of my Nike logo with the stitches. It's very cool like this. Okay, so I will now open the tie flow setup. Here, tie flow, open editor, and let's see what we have here. Basically, the same setup that the close stretching simulation, close modify binding and stretching simulation. You can see here the tutorial, so I will not explain again the same part, the same thing, but it will take a little time to see the operator step by step. So here I have my brush object with a plane. After convert into a close bind, I have here the CUDA collision solver, but even if you don't have the CUDA, it will work. I will show you, just deactivate, and I will wait the simulation. And as you can see, it's basically the same simulation. We have the close vertex and after all, the creation of the pattern with the stitches. Great. I will just switch here to the clay mode and we'll see it again. Okay, so we have the burrows. After convert the plane into close bind, we have a force at the beginning or the creation of the vortex of the animation of the clothes with a here a tie vortex and a small turbulence after we have the modify binding this modify binding is used to create a little inflation here with the inflation force after as you can see here we have a surface test with an object bind i will just zoom out a bit you can see here the simulation and reactivate the rectangle one okay this one and the rectangle one just used to bind the cloth to the rectangle. I don't want that the vortex deform too much the cloth. And here we have the second surface test and this one is used to create this effect. So I use the box one. As I said previously in the tutorial you can see here the box one and the box one will control the creation of the stretching of the cloth can see here, go back to frame zero, and with the creation of the animation of the box here, you can see creation of the stretching. It's very cool like this. Okay, go back to the type flow setup. You have, as I said, surface test with the box one, a modify binding with this parameter to create the stretching effect, and after just another object bind with the plane too because I want the stitches to be on the plane and not in the air. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget to give me a thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. And as I said at the beginning of the video, you can find all my projects on my Patreon and purchase this file on Gumroad. You can also follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you want. See you very soon for a new tutorial guys. Bye!